Good morning and welcome back to Kirkstone. You find me, as it were, mid-process. I'm uh, experimenting with some leaf cuttings from Sansevieria or snake plants. I've just taken three leaves from Sansevieria cylindrica and two from subspecies Batula and about a month ago I cut these off and they've been drying, callousing as it were so there's one there so you can see the dry end has been inserted into the soil and uh, I'm now going to await developments now you'll see that on this uh, this larger leaf here of the cylindrica that the leaf has actually started to fold in on itself because it, of course it's drying out it has had no contact with any nutrient or water for nearly a month now so this is usually a good sign that they are they are ready to be used as leaf cuttings. But being extremely xerophytic, these Sansevierias, they will they will last a long time. So what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll I'll do a separate film on the propagation of these and the success and or otherwise of Sansevieria leaf cutting methods. And I'll uh, I'll post that up on YouTube a little bit later, whether it works or whether it doesn't. But in the meantime, yes, the postman has been. So I'll put these Sansevierias in a safe place over here on top of my hardy container of uh, fertiliser. And I've got a delivery from one of my uh, most esteemed suppliers from Benjamin Bannister who trains as Knobs and Globs on uh, eBay UK. And uh, Knobs and Globs, as I've said before, they, uh, they have tended to supply me with extremely high quality plants, um, perfect in every case in fact, without exception perfect, at very reasonable prices. Um, so Benjamin is not a price gouger in any way whatsoever. My recommendation is visit, he's normally got 30 to 50 different plants up for auction and they're always auction so you've got a real chance of getting a bargain at any one time. Now. Benjamin doesn't like wasting money. He certainly doesn't waste money on frippery and frivolity like plant labels or even pieces of paper with the name scrawled on. So I'm resorting to technology and uh, I've become recently interested, as I've told people before, in the, the genus Furocactus especially and in uh, the Echinocactani as a broader general group, so including Echinocactus and um, homala cephala and others of that ilk so the spiny barrel cacti of the southern united states so what have we got here well we've got a beautiful beautiful plant and this looks to me let me have a look if i can uh, just verify that this is a short spined version of a furocactus called furocactus Horridus or Horridus. Now, Furocactus Horridus is a very heavily, aggressively spined cactus. And in the wild, when it's growing in direct sunlight and it's getting the benefit of all those ultraviolet and uh, infrared rays directly from the sun without interference from glass, you can get some amazing spination on this plant. But this is the former Brevis spinus. Now the spines are just as sharp, trust me, but they are very, very short. And this means that you can see the ribs and the colour of the plant very clearly. And it really is a, a beautiful, symmetrical plant. But those central spines are wickedly hooked. You know, there's no chance of that not catching on clothing, ah, or indeed skin, if you are in any way unwary. But that's our... That's our first uh, first plant. That's Furocactus horridus, former Brevis spinus. And I think I'll put the plants down this way around for when we do the roll call at the end. Now this is a larger plant. I can't feel any spines yet. But that doesn't mean they're not there. So what could this be? It might not be a cactus, but then again, oh, it is. Let me just see. 
Now this has got longish spines and very narrow ribs. But it is another ferrocactus, that uh, seems to be reasonably clear. With long, hard, well developed central spines. And the other thing worth noting at this stage, of course, is that Benjamin, your knobs and blobs man, always packs the plants incredibly professionally. And the plants are always arriving with all the spines intact. Sometimes the central spines of a, of a plant can be quite delicate. But they're very well cushioned. Oh, look at those, those spines are, uh, are something amazing. Now this is either the Furocactus californicus or, in this case, looking at the picture, I'm quite satisfied that this is Furocactus townsendianus. Now you can see how the plant has developed from a, a quite small globular plant to this much larger, and this is what, this is about, oh, hard to say, 10 centimetres, 4 inches across. So there's a second gorgeous ferrocactus. Absolutely not a mark on it. Quite difficult to handle. It's desperate to grab, to grab hold of me, as these ferrocacti are. And you can see on these newer central spines here, on the newer growth, they've got these lovely ridges. And they're incredibly robust and strong central spines. They're really uh, aggressively hedgehog-like barrel cactus. And this is what attracts me to this genus above all others, that really strong spination. Now there may be another couple of ferrocacti in this order, including the aforementioned Californicus. Let's have a look. Oh, this is a big one. This is a big bundle. I'm just scrolling down to try and give, get, try and give myself a, an advantage. And it's not, it's not even a cactus. Can you guess what it is? I'll give you, I'll give you a glimpse. And look at that sharp black central spine, lovely dark green leaf. And some white markings, that's the clue. And well, this is often considered in its mature form when it has hundreds, if not thousands, of leaves. And uh, the white striation on those leaves is very well developed in a mature plant to be considered one of the most beautiful of all agaves and I, I would certainly agree with that from this specimen that is that is an absolutely beautiful plant and this is agave victoriae regini queen victoria's agave you can see it's been grown in a very sandy loose open mix and that's developed this fantastic root system now we've also got some youngsters coming up at the sides here, some pups or daughters. One, two, three, four, five, six little youngsters. But that view there is what immediately identifies um, Agave Victoria Regini. So it does have some similarities with... Um, Ferdinandi Regis, which is now known as Nickelsii. I won't waste time talking about that because I've talked about it before. But that curious patterning, of course, is because when the leaves are held together before they separate in that central cone, the edge of the leaf actually imparts or imbues its patination onto the leaves on either side of it. So these triangular marks that you can see are actually the edges of the previous leaves when they were held together in a tight cluster in that central cone. And that is that is such a worthy addition to my to my small medium-sized agave collection. It will go 
very well with plants that have arrived recently. Now we are going to do an overview of the genus Agave and, uh, and related plants like Manfreda and the hybrid Mangave very very soon. I'm just getting those last few pebbles out here. Isn't that a, a beautiful beautiful plant? Right, try and keep on top of the rubbish if I can. And here's another one. Now you can see each of these plants, yeah, you sort of mentally categorize cacti and succulents, or I do, by how much you would be likely to pay for them if you went to a specialist dealer or you bought at a cactus show. And uh, these are all, in my humble opinion, very clearly plants that should be priced at 15 to 20 pounds. And of course, none of them. <coughs> Alhamdulillah. Any of them were anything like that price. And this is another reddish, although not quite as brilliantly ruby red as uh, Furacactus gracilis. And particularly, it's, uh, it's incredibly vividly uh, spined and coloured former Furacactus gracilis coloratus. This is actually Furacactus acanthides. So another similar plant. And I did talk before about why people collect things in sets. The psychology of collecting. And you can see it's very apparent in myself. And it's a process that I observe. That I become attracted to things which are similar to other things. And one of the great beauties of the genus Furrocactus to me. And the Echinocactus for that matter is that they are sufficiently different from each other to be interesting, but sufficiently similar to constitute a set. So I'll carefully take this off the those hooked central spines, which are so characteristic of the genus Furocactus. And uh, we'll just place that Furocactus acanthides down to three more large globular Furocacti for the... Uh, the Furrocacti OCD must have them all complete the set Pokemon style collection. So that's four fabulous plants from Benjamin. And I half know what this one is because I can uh, I can distantly remember the order placed before I went on a mini holiday. And this is another Furrocactus. tablet doesn't want to come on. The joys of working with technology in a greenhouse. Now if we've had Acanthides and we've had Horidus, what might this one be? And I can seem to remember from memory the missing one, and I did mention it earlier on in the video. And uh, this is the slightly larger, but equally gorgeous, Californicus. I believe. I will, uh, of course, go back with a fine tooth comb later on. Whereas it possible, I may have mixed up Acanthides and uh, Californicus because they are not a million miles away from each other. But something has just occurred to me that one of the things about Californicus and Acanthides that will allow me to separate them is that Californicus has a mysterious set of extra areoles which don't carry spines above the orthodox set of areoles which do carry spines. So I shall now revise on close examination I shall revise my opinion and in fact you can see the similarity in why those why those plants might possibly be confused in the eyes of the layman. Okay that's Californicus because as you can see above 
each bit of spination, I don't know if you can see that, above each cluster of spination, there's an extra little grey woolly tuft, which doesn't seem to do a great deal. It must have some evolutionary purpose, but at the end of the day, that's just a mystery, because what it does do, satisfactorily, is identify that Furocactus as Californicus. Now look at that central spine there. It's not quite as uh, as vivid as um, Gracilis coloratus, but it's damn close in terms of generating a ruby red. And it's more like a a, a bone. A um, it's a kind of structure you'd see either on a bone in a mammal or some kind of um, insect. It's actually ridged, edged, and there are lateral striations. So it's not just a smooth spine coming out of the plant. It has its own architectural and geometric features. Beautiful, beautiful ruby red spines with a, a very clear light brown edging. But all of these spines are clearly ridged. Lovely. Ferrocactus californicus and uh, Ferrocactus acanthides now satisfactorily identified. And we have one plant left. Well, I don't know what this is. And it's spiny. And this is a new genus for me. So I should say, in, a, in, a, in an effort to be as inclusive as possible to the viewers, a new genus for us. Because this is the first of another small genus that I've become interested in, the genus Thelocactus. And this is a, a representative of that group known as Thelocactus rhynchosensis. Now you can see in marked and uh, apparent uh, contradistinction between, for example, Furocactus and, um, and Thelocactus, now the Thelocactus doesn't have those uh, easily identifiable ribs. All furrocacti have ribs and indeed echinocacti that may raise up into something that looks like a tubercle but is in fact clearly part of that overall radial symmetry. So the ribs are quite apparent on a furrocactus. Now on a Thelocactus or Thelocactus which makes them particularly interesting to me, that whilst there are ribish uh, shapes, each spine cluster on the tip of the areole is quite clearly raised up on an individual tubercle, which makes the plants almost, to my mind, a halfway house between the Echinocactini group and um, other genera such as um, Mammalaria. In fact, you could almost see a continuum between Echinocactus, then Thelocactus, then Corifanta, and then Mammalaria. Now, there are clearly evolutionary gradations between those groups. So whilst you might look at a Mammalaria and say, well, that doesn't look anything like a Furrocactus, when you put a Thelocactus and a Corifanta in between those two groups, you can see that they form a continuum, an evolutionary line from one body shape, one morphology to another. But anyway, that's the sixth plant in this haul from Knobs and Blobs. Once again, what can I say? The quality of the plants is, uh, is utterly outstanding from that uh, wonderful Ferrocactus acanthides, a Ferrocactus Horridus. I've done it. I've made. I've made the cardinal mistake. I've got the clothing caught up in the spines. That Ferrocactus Horridus with those incredibly powerful but short. I've done it again. I've got caught spines. It really, really are not the easiest plants to handle. And uh, that Ferrocactus Californicus. That wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, new Thelocactus, uh, another interesting group for me to collect, although I won't be doing much plant buying from now on. 
until the spring there was a few um, odds and sods some of the odds and sods are from knobs and blobs they're knobs and blobs odds and sods they should be arriving over the next few weeks but really after the end of uh, October I don't really buy uh, summer growing plants as I've talked about before it can be very difficult to establish and some of these plants not the ones from Benjamin some plants can be very expensive and clearly it would be foolhardy in the extreme to buy a plant which is liable to die in the British winter. I'm uh, fascinated by this Agave Victoria Regini. You know, I can remember seeing pictures of this plant in books 40 years ago maybe, maybe even uh, 50 years ago and thinking what a, what a wonderful plant. But I've never owned one. Uh, as I've talked about before I've avoided buying agaves because I knew once I started buying agaves I'd become quickly addicted and when you see uh, a shape and a pattern like that you can understand why anyway another superb 10 out of 10 five stars however you want to categorize it delivery from knobs and blobs 2 on ebay uk so benjamin bishop has once again excelled himself so we've got those four wonderful furrow cacti to add to the collection acanthides Californicum, the Thelocactus, which has just come, Rinconensis, that fabulous, beautiful Agave Victoria Regini, and the other Furocacti which have arrived, including that savagely sharp but short spined Horridus uh, Brevispinus. Fantastic delivery from Knobs and Blobs. I'm going to pop these up now, and there will be super detailed pictures on Facebook on the Kirkstone Botanica page on Facebook and there'll also be some pictures coming up in due course on Instagram slightly different pictures from slightly different angles please do like share subscribe visit but more than anything else please 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 send us pictures of your own plants we love to see other people's plants see what they're growing share cultivation oh and another thing a couple of people have contacted me who have become friends over the last few weeks about uh, doing some swapping and some uh, plant exchanging and of course we're all in favor of that we all have uh, surplus plants we have plants which are producing offsets or pups or daughters um, if you want to become involved in that then just drop me a line we really really would like to swap plants with each other and, uh, and build the international Kirkstone Botanica movement. Thanks a lot. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye for now. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. There's the sun coming in from the windows from all directions. The fuchsia's just moving lightly in the breeze. And if we can move out and look at the Kirkstone garden, the grass is green as opposed to grey. And there's a fabulous blue sky with some light... Uh, nimbus and stratocumulus clouds floating in there the only problem with having a blue sky in this country of course is it's indicative of a cold night to come and we don't like cold nights when we're greenhouse gardeners anyway bye bye for now bye bye from kirkstone and i'll see you very very soon bye bye for now